My favorite film of 2019 so far is Bong Joon-ho's Palme d'Or winner, Parasite. It's a much needed, timely social commentary that is comically entertaining and brilliantly layered with dark, thrilling twists. So I'm going to break this video into two different segments. First, a spoiler-free review for those who haven't seen it, and then an in-depth analysis of the film's story and theme. First, Parasite's brilliance starts with a phenomenal script about a poor family in South Korea living in a semi-basement. Struggling through unemployment and unable to pay the internet bill, the family starts taking advantage of the affluent Park family. They get inside thanks to ki -woo's relationship with the previous English tutor to Dae Hae, but trick the Parks into hiring the whole family. Ignorant of their connection, the first half works as a dark comedy, the poor playfully tricking the rich. But the film starts descending into madness during the second half, and this is why you'll need to see this movie. It's bizarre, and it makes so much sense. It reminds me at times of a Tarantino film. Everything is so over the top, but still grounded in reality. Plus, the focus on white collar crime and the use of music as a force reminds me of Tarantino. There's a lot of connection to Western culture, but I'll save that for the analysis. Previous to Parasite, the only films I've seen from director Bong Joon-ho were Snowpiercer and Okja. Both are highly original films with fantastic visuals. I'm happy to say that Parasite tops these films with its sheer beauty. The architecture, the sky, the city, it's all very impressive work grounded in reality, whereas the other two films lean towards fantasy. Drastically. The architecture I'm referring to is the house which 60% of the film takes place in. The production team, which also worked so on Snowpiercer, did a fantastic years. job of creating a set that embodies its characters and rich themes. Performances are incredible yeah, all around. I'm not going to embarrass myself by butchering these actors' names, but Mr. Kim, played by this fellow, is absolutely remarkable. I found myself in tears every time I've watched the film because of this amazing actor. I can't give him enough praise. The film is definitely a 5 out of 5 star from me, and I can't recommend it enough. I'm super excited to jump into my analysis, but please, if you haven't seen the film yet, watch it first. It's worth your time. Just to be clear, spoilers are ahead. I'm going to break down the film into four chapters to discuss the film's progression piece by piece, breaking down the themes as I go. Then I'll have a quick conclusion, summing up the themes and the things I really love about the film as a whole. Our analysis begins in a semi-basement in South Korea, with Ki Woo trying to access an internet connection. It's a sad reality where internet is a luxury. Ki Woo is able to access a nearby coffee shop's free internet, enabling the Kim family to reach out to the pizza place they want to work with, revealing that they are all unemployed. As they fold these pizza boxes together, a fumigation service begins spraying the street that their semi-basement window is connected to. Tired of the stink bugs infesting their home, they decide to leave the window open to get free fumigation. It's a sad sight, but it doesn't seem to phase Mr. Kim's drive. Finishing these boxes means they get to eat, maybe even reconnect their internet. The semi-basement is a physical resemblance of this family's struggles, and in a broader perspective, symbolizes the living conditions of lower class in South Korea. There's even a smell, synonymous with semi-basement living, that would become an issue later on. The semi-basement also symbolizes a sort of purgatory between the above-ground people and the underground, similar to the concept of Jordan Peele's Us. The Kim family, throughout this film, is fighting to join the ranks of those living above, like the Park family. We'll soon see the Park's beautiful above-ground home that our charming Kim family will eventually play house guest in. Director Bong Joon-ho provides a very visual and physical perspective of the class system. Something strange happens in the first chapter of this film. Ki Wu receives a gift from an affluent friend, an artifact from the upper class, a token of good fortune. This gift is accompanied by a job offer for Ki Wu to take over the tutoring position his friend previously held. All he'll have to do is forge a document from a nearby university pretending to be a student, the first deception of many. This gift is very important to the arc of Ki Wu. 
could have it'll be with him till the end. I'd like to think it gives him a power, the power of favor with Mrs. Park, the power of believing he belongs with the affluent, untainted by the scent of the semi-basement. This chapter of the film is what reminds me of a Tarantino, upbeat, white-collar crime film pumping the blood of whatever song Quentin decides fits the vibe of his classy, insulting art. There's a tempo created in Parasite by its composer, mixed with quick shots and even quicker wit. When the first Park family member is introduced, it's almost like she's another species, sleeping in the daylight in a beautiful yard without a care in the world. The exact opposite of what the Kim clan is dealing with in the semi-basement. Mrs. Park immediately brushes off the university papers in exchange for a personal test. She wants to watch Ki Wu work, which I think is funny, because Ki Wu's friend recommended photoshopping a degree, with no care for how it belittles the work he's put into his own degree. And Mrs. Park isn't even concerned with it. To her, it's a given. Of course, Ki Wu's a student. Doesn't mean he's worthy of tutoring her daughter. This is commentary on how the upper class treats the system that embellishes them, which the lower class is fighting to be a part of. Anyways, he's able to impress her. He impresses her so much that he's comfortable planting a seed about a cousin's friend who's available as a therapist, secretly getting his sister Kai Jung an interview without revealing their relationship. Why is this a secret? Because in discovering Mrs. Park's pure ignorance, Ki Wu has already conjured a plan to get his whole family hired. Kai Jung is hired as Dasong's art therapist at a high rate. After taking advantage of Mrs. Park's insecurities surrounding her son and her ability to be a parent, <gasps> Kai Jung is very dominant, while Ki Wu can be seen as lighthearted. Both of them want the same thing, but go about it differently. Kai Jung purposefully leaves her underwear behind in Mr. Park's car while being driven home by the Park's personal driver, so Mr. Kim, who's had driving experience, can take his place. Everything goes as planned, and Mr. Kim is able to pass Mr. Park's test, earning his spot as the driver. In another film, the Kim family could have stopped here, enjoying their lavish jobs, possibly even moving out of that semi-basement, but the Kim family gets greedy. And I'll talk more about how this ties into the film's themes in a minute. Over a pizza, the Kim clan plans an extraction of the current housekeeper, Moon Guang. The plan is to convince Mrs. Park that Moon has tuberculosis by poisoning her with peaches, which Ki Wu discovers from De He is a severe allergy of hers. The icing on top of this cruel plan is having Mr. Kim plant hot sauce, the same hot sauce they enjoyed with their pizza, as blood. The plan works. With her gone, they invent a fake elite housekeeping service to get Mrs. Kim hired at a top rate, even inventing a classy business card that calls back to American Psycho. Look at that subtle off-white coloring. A tasteful thickness of it. The Kim clan has found themselves house-sitting for the Parks, who have gone on a birthday camping trip for Desong, playing house in a beautiful home that they don't belong in. The audience already knows something is going to go wrong. It's just too good to be true. And the whole film shifts in tempo and mood. Before I dive into the inevitable downfall of our charming Kim clan, I want to talk about something I noticed. I noticed Kai Jung eating dog food. She's drunk at this point, so it's understandable. But it reminded me of the Bible story of King Nebuchadnezzar, the king who was cursed by God for being too prideful, too greedy, kind of like the Kim family at this point. King Nebuchadnezzar went mad, living in the woods as an animal, eating grass and prey. Maybe it's a long shot. I'd accept that it's a coincidence, but Kai Jung eating dog food, laughing hysterically right before Moon rings the doorbell and changes the tempo of the film is pretty cool. And if it wasn't just coincidence, I'd bet the religious symbolism is another way Parasite ties in American culture. Which brings me to this major theme of Parasite. 
Americanism. The most evident use of Americanism in the film is Dasong's obsession with American Indians. His arrows, tent, his camping trip. The root of Americanism in this film is the very reason the Kim clan is being so greedy. Western culture is synonymous with capitalism. The Tarantino vibe, the direct reference to American Psycho, the biblical symbolism. Bong Joon-ho's reference to American culture only makes what happens next so impactful. The inevitable downfall of the Kim clan, the inevitable demise of Western culture. I love the shot of Moon. It's so creepy and mysterious. Her descent down the stairs is yet again a physical representation of the class system. Except in this scenario, we are introduced to the underground dweller, the parasite. Hell, if the semi-basement is purgatory, then the park home is heaven, and this underground secret is hell. I'm going to call this character the parasite, because he's the main reason for the film's title. The parasite has been living in this basement since the previous owner left, the previous owner being the architect of this beautiful home. Moon confesses, in effort to win the Kim's clan sympathy for her husband, that he's wanted by loan sharks because of a failed investment in a cake shop. He'd rather live underground with the comfort of love than deal with the actual world. He pays homage to Mr. Park for his unknown generosity by doing this. While re-watching the film, I was impressed with the subtle notions that point to this revelation. Mr. Park's introduction is signaled with the lights, which can be excused for cool imagery, but we really know what's going down. Mr. Park mentions that Moon eats enough for two. This little jest has significance because Moon steals food for her husband, actually feeding two people. Mr. Kim used to work for the cake shop that sent the parasite into debt. It's easy to miss this comment, but it adds dynamic later on, when it's brought up again. I thought it was a cool extra layer of depth. Desong's painting, or self-portrait as Mrs. Park calls it, has a creepy black spot in it, which Kai Jung uses as leverage to get more pay out of Mrs. Park calling herself an art therapist. This black spot, we later discover, is our parasite, who Desong discovered one night while having a midnight snack. The layers to this film are remarkable. Bong Joon-ho uses every line, every shot to create this layered, dynamic story. It's incredible filmmaking. The greed we discussed in chapter 2, the Americanism, I believe is the cause of strife between these two struggling families. The Kim clan doesn't show remorse for the parasite situation, feeling as if they are better. And the atmosphere quickly turns tense before an all-out brawl. The weak prey on the weaker. This makes me think about crime in impoverished communities like Compton in California. I don't think Jun Ho means to answer the question of why do the poor prey on the poor, but the situation he's created is synonymous with that of gang violence in America, which also aids in deepening the theme of Americanism in this film. The gang brawl is ended by a phone call. The park's camping trip ended early and they're only eight minutes from home. This scene is so exhilarating. The Kim clan has to simultaneously clean the house, hide the parasite, prepare a meal, and then get out of the house. There's not enough time for all of this and the parks arrive before they can leave. And Moon gets loose. The Kim clan finds themselves hiding under the living room coffee table, and the Parks decide to sleep on the couch while watching Desong, who obviously hasn't given up on camping yet. The importance of this scene is a scent, the semi-basement smell. This hurts Mr. Kim deeply, his class being synonymous with a bad smell. This hurt. Anger proves to be vital in the last chapter. 
And if we look back to the scene where Mr. Park finds Kai Jung's underwear, we can see his first reaction to this smell, as well as the scene where DeSong smells both Mr. and Mrs. Kim. When the Parks fall asleep, the Kim clan is able to make their way down the city, back to their purgatory, only now with a guilty conscience and a rain problem. This is my favorite scene in the film, because it just hurts to watch. The reality of poverty in South Korea is Parasite's testament, and this unimaginable situation is visually astonishing and emotionally devastating. The metaphorical rock that, until this point, was untainted by the semi-basement, is no longer clean, but reeking of sewage and the semi-basement smell. After this moment, and where I'll pick up in the final chapter of this film, is with Kai Wu's altered mindset, seemingly losing the metaphorical power that the artifact granted him. The next day, the Park family throws a themed birthday party for DeSong to make up for the failed camping trip. All the Kims are invited and paid overtime as guests. Our focus, though, is on Kai Wu, who seems to be deeply disturbed. With his artifact tainted, Kai Wu no longer believes he fits in with the affluent crowd. His artifact, which he brought with him, is coming close to the end of its journey. The previous night, in distress, Mr. Kim opened up to his son concerning his guilt for having murdered Moon, confessing that the best plan is no plan at all. Ki Wu takes responsibility for having begun this crazy plan in the first place and believes taking care of their parasite is his problem. And the rock that seemingly gave him powers will almost end his life. All the microaggressions become a horrific reality, with our parasite enacting revenge on the Kim family for murdering his wife. But with Kai Jung bleeding out and Mrs. Kim fighting for her life and Mr. Park begging his driver to rush to Song to the hospital, Mr. Kim is in the worst possible situation. The guilt, sadness, anger all boiling in his blood. He doesn't know what to do until he sees Mr. Park's reaction to our parasite smell and all the emotion turns into rage. This action is out of Kim's character, and he doesn't know what to do, so he hides. This moment is actually foreshadowed earlier in the film, when the Kim family is playing house guest. I love the end of this film, and I hope you do too. Kai Wu wakes up out of brain surgery with a side effect of uncontrollable laughter, and he learns of the aftermath of the dinner party, of his sister's death, his father's disappearance, he can't help but laugh. After enough time goes by, he journeys out to the house, just in case his father might have hid in the secret room, and he discovers a message sent by his father through the lights in the use of Morse code. His father is trapped, wanted by the government, living in a home now owned by strangers, unable to escape and with nowhere to go if he did. And here we are, back where we started, in the semi-basement. A very fitting ending that echoes the message Parasite wants to deliver. The rich get richer and the poor get poorer. So Ki Wu devises a plan, a plan to make enough money to buy the house 
and to rescue his father. But until then, we can interpret Kiwu's plan to save his father as a near impossibility. If he ever made enough money to buy that house, it probably wouldn't be in his father's lifetime. It's a tragic end, just like it needed to be. I love this film and the many layers to its story. The use of Americanism through religious symbolism, references to American films, and the gang violence concept of the poor versus poor. I love the metaphorical rock and what it means for Kaibu's character. I love the connection between our parasite and De Song's mental illness. I love Mr. Kim's performance and his struggle as a father of an impoverished family. I love this movie, and I'd like to hear what you think about it too. Were there any themes that I looked over? Or maybe you have a different perspective on a theme I discussed. Let me know in the comments. This movie is making waves in cinematic history, and I'm hoping it does well this award season. It's my pick for best picture, and I dare a better movie to release. Thanks for watching. Subscribe, like, and please share. I'll see you next Sunday.